Welcome back to Chemistry on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss more on the quantification of precision. In the previous video, we talked about calculating a parts per thousand, which allowed us to determine whether or not our data set was precise or imprecise. And if our parts per thousand was less than 20.0, we had good precision. If it was greater than this, we had not so good precision. Okay. Now, if we have not so good precision, it might result from an extreme value, which in statistics we might refer to as an outlier. So here's our data set. We have 19.00, 20.21, 20.34, 20.38, 20.42, and 20.55. And 19.00 appears to be an extreme value. All of these other numbers seem to cluster maybe around 20.30, but 19.00 appears to be an outlier. And we can kind of eyeball this and say, well, maybe that value is gonna make our data set less precise. And so what we can ask ourselves is, can we throw out this data point? Now, we can't just throw it out by looking at it and saying it's a bad data point. We have to prove it's a bad data point. We have to prove that it's an outlier. And the way that we prove that is through something called a Dixon Q test. Okay, So when you do a Dixon Q test, you first need to identify the value you think is extreme. And it's either going to be the lowest value or the greatest value. Okay, It's never going to be one in the middle at first. Okay. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna list those numbers in increasing order. So notice that's already done here. These numbers are listed in from the lowest number increasing to the greatest number. And again, notice that our extreme value is on the low end. It would either have to be here or on the high end, all right? And what we're gonna do in this Dixon Q test is we're gonna determine whether or not we can throw out 19.00. So the first thing we need to do is determine the difference between the extreme value, which is the 19.00, that means the number we're trying to throw out, and the next closest, that's called the variance. So we need to calculate the variance. And this is not the variance that you probably talked about in another statistics course. This is a different variance. That's just what we're calling it here. So I need to determine the difference between 19.00 and the number closest to it. Well, obviously the number closest to it is 20.21, right? If I was trying to throw out 20.55, the number closest to that would be 20.42, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. So to calculate the variance, which is the difference between these two numbers, I just take 20.21 and subtract 19.00, and I get 1.21. And again, notice all of these have units, but the point is, is this 1.21, that is the variance, okay? That's our variance. The next thing I need to do is calculate the range of the data. This is the same range that you've always calculated in a statistics course. You just take the high value minus the low value. That hasn't changed. So our high value is 20.55, and I'm just going to subtract the low value, which just happens to be our extreme value, 19.00 and our range is 1.55. And now, once we've calculated the variance in the range, we can calculate what's called the Q experimental. So this is a Q test. So what we're gonna have in the end is we're gonna have a Q experimental. This is what's calculated. And then we're gonna have a Q critical, which we'll look at on the next slide, and we'll look that one up in a table. All right, so to calculate the Q experimental, I take the variance and I divide by the range. Well, the variance was up here what we calculated, 1.21, so 1.21, and then I'm going to divide by the range, which is 1.55, so divided by 1.55. And initially you get something like 0 0.78064, but considering I want to maintain my significant digits, I'm going to round this off to 3, which is 0 0.781. Right? Notice that the Q experimental is unitless. That's because both of these are densities, and so they had a grams per mil unit, and so that both of those units end up canceling out. Okay? So my Q experimental is 0 0.781. Now I need to look up what's called a Q critical, but I have to remember how many data points I have. I have one, two, three, four, five, six data points. So these uh, tables would be either in your textbook or your lab manual, or you can probably just look them up online. 
Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to default to this table and find the critical Q or the Q critical. So to do that, I just find the number of data points, which was six, and my Q critical is 0 0.560. So at this point, I have a Q experimental that I just calculated, that is 0 0.781, and I have the Q critical, which I just looked up in the table based on the number of trials or measurements, which was 0 0.560. And the rule is this. If your experimental Q is greater than the critical Q, then you reject the extreme value. So remember what we were trying to do. We were trying to determine whether or not we can throw out this 19.00, which was our extreme value. We want to see if we can throw the data point out. And so the rule is, if the Q experimental is greater than the Q critical, we can throw that data point out. Okay? And so 0.781 is greater than 0.560, so that means we can essentially throw out the 19.00, okay? And if we were to throw out that 19.00, we'd just be left with all these other five data points. So hopefully that makes sense. You can also repeat the Dixon Q test to see if you can throw out any other points. So let's just repeat it again, just to see if we can now throw out 20.21. Okay? But notice, since we've already thrown out the 19.00, it no longer appears. Now we only have five data points. Again, these are still in order. So let's now calculate the variance, the range, and then the new Q experimental for the second round of this, which you may or may not have to do. All right, so the variance is just the difference between the extreme value and the value right next to it. So that would just be 20.34 minus 20.21, and I get a variance of 0 0.13. Now I'm just going to calculate the range, which is the high value minus the low value. 20.55 minus 20.21, I get a range of 0 0.34. To calculate the Q experimental, as before, I take the variance and divide by the range. The variance we calculated as 0.13, and the range is 0.34. Now notice in this case, both of these have two significant digits, so my final Q experimental will only have two significant digits. And so I initially, if you punch this into the calculator, you get 0.3823, but we can round this off to 0.38. So 0 0.38 is my Q experimental. Now what I need to do is, again, compare this Q experimental to the Q critical. But notice now I only have five data points because I was able to throw out the 19.00. So now when I look this up in the table, I'm only going to be looking at five trials or five measurements. So my new Q critical is 0.642. And so I'm just going to ask myself, how does... 0.38 compared to 0.642. Now remember, the only way we could reject the extreme value or throw it out would be if Q experimental was greater than Q critical. But our Q experimental is not greater than Q critical. It's actually less than it. So we cannot reject that extreme value or we cannot throw it out. We actually have to keep it. Okay. And this Dixon Q test, you can keep repeating and repeating um, for all the extreme values. What you could do next is you could repeat it with the high value and just see if you could throw that one out. Okay? But hopefully the Dixon Q test makes sense to you. Pretty much all you're doing with this is following these steps and basically just answering the question, can I throw out an extreme data point? All right. Hopefully this made sense. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.